Hi, I'm Nicole here with another episode of Builder's Journey on the Club Pod. In this episode of Builder's Journey, I spoke with Will Rowe, CEO of Protein and one of the leads of Protein DAO, a community where people and ideas grow. We spent time discussing Protein's definition of good growth and how the values and principles around this were designed and continue to evolve with the community. Will also shared some of the educational tools and resources built by Protein and how these connect to their values. It's a great how-to listen on taking a community from initial steps into sustainable development. Enjoy! GM, and welcome, Will. How are you? Very well, Nicole. Very well. Really good to see you. How are things? Great to see you. Uh, yeah, things are good. Busy, busy, and and good. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us here on the Club Pod for Builder's Journey. Um, I would love, before we get started, for you to introduce yourself and also tell us a little bit about what protein is. Sure. Um, well, GM everyone, uh, I'm William Rowe, um, uh, founder of Protein. Uh, we are a few businesses, um, well, Web2 businesses that evolved into Web3 through um, through C Club back in February last year, cohort two. Um, and our mission out of all of Protein is about helping people and ideas grow. Uh, that's why we're called protein that's what we do that's sort of where we go and um you know to me the introduction into web3 which was you know, a year ago now was one of uh, you know rabbit holes i think <laughs> applies for everybody um in terms of discovery but it really resonated deeply on you know its potential for the technology um and really connecting my existing you know, protein web two businesses, which is a an agency business, a brand consultancy, with a um, studios business as we call it, which is a a creative workspace and event space. Um, with our you know small investment um, business, with our you know our community at large, um, which manifests in various different places in various different ways, but it was all pretty disconnected uh, and. Discovering Web3, discovering social tokens, discovering, you know, and this isn't necessarily about the blockchain explicitly. I think this is more about a mindset uh, and a philosophy of decentralized ownership. That was just, yeah, that's the aha moment. And <laughs> I put a tweet out <clears throat> a while ago. It's like, I've been waiting 20 years for this. So <laughs> it's like, it's here now. And um, yeah, super excited to really just test it. Uh, so what we're currently doing uh, specifically off the back of our you know, C-Club experience is to build a tokenized community uh, that we're currently running on Discord and to really you know, make our mission of helping people and ideas grow tangible, uh, which we have uh, you know, embodied into what we call our good growth framework, which effectively is just a, you know, a way of making decisions if you want to be, you know, simplify it. It's a way of deciding um, collaboratively, collectively, what um, you know, what's important, uh, and creating the metrics of you know sustainable growth, and you know really challenging what is growth and why why do you want to grow? Uh, and there's a lot of existing amazing work out there from uh, you know triple bottom lines uh, in terms of profit, people and planet, you know, ESGs. Uh, there's, 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 there's some phenomenal thinking, uh, but you know, we really want to bring that into a, a web three world. And we've looked a lot at B Corp, uh, and you know, what they're doing and it's, you know, and it's, it's not that, but you know, I guess we're sort of borrowing bits from a lot of these existing frameworks and approaches to actually develop it into something that's practical, useful, and ultimately creates value, uh, which underpins any token in terms of that that core utility so um yeah that was a lot <laughs> but ultimately is uh yeah where we're going and yeah super excited to be well sharing our journey um hopefully some of our learnings so other people can <laughs> not make the mistakes that we made uh but yeah see we see where we end up yeah well that's that's why we're here and so much of this is about 
sharing the bumps and challenges and learnings that we've been through so that other projects can take from that. And we came through the Second Seed Club cohort together. And so it's been really fun watching Protein go from an idea to something that's just really making a name for itself in Web3. Um, I'm curious, you know, you had many different communities. As you mentioned, Protein was already a lot of different things before Web3. There was the agency, there was the physical space, there was this community. And when you started transitioning into Web3, how did you think about who you were going to bring in from those existing communities into the Web3 community? And how did you think about finding new members, new sort of Web3 native members? Um, you know, how many, what does your community currently look like if you were to look at sort of previous protein members versus um, new Web3 people that found you, um, you know, just within the Web3 community? How did you think about that? And what does your community look like now? Yeah, it's a good question. We had, so in terms of numbers, um, on our mailing list, our monthly supplement, 35,000 combined socials, about the same. Uh, our previous platform, uh, which was on Mighty Networks, around 5,500. And, um, and then, you know, specifically within that, around our studios community, which is very much where I am now, our workspace, that's like 150, or our agency you know, network of creative scouts, consultants, you know, similar sort of numbers. So, yeah, disconnected, if you want to Venn diagram that out. And um, and we spent a lot of time asking that question of, if we were going to start again, um, what's wrong with the current in terms of how we can improve it? But who, you know, who do we want in this community? And the simple answer to that is alignment of values. And really what, I guess our challenge was and maybe was slightly different from some of the other projects in in C Club is the fact that we've been around for a while. We sort of gathered a, a whole lot of people and that's no disrespect to those folks, by the way. But, you know, you do anything for a long time and, you know, you, people get connected. So we were like, OK, we proactively and intentionally made a, a clear cut and closed Mighty Networks and then basically asked people to reapply through a through a screener. And, you know, we would, we took our time, uh, A, to really make sure that those questions that we were asking were screening against the right values. But really, before that, even asking a question about what we're trying to achieve here. And, you know, this is where the good growth uh, mission and um, ambition, you know, came from. And then relative and without, were, <laughs> to be fair, there was a lot of work that went into it. But as soon as you've got that, it's actually pretty simple because that's a filter for decisions. It's like, it, does this person, does this project, I mean, does this anything, does this partnership, does this collaboration align with these set of values? And, you know, if yes, awesome. You know, if no, why no? Can we shift it? Or if no, like, you know, discard it. Um, so that's, and again, in terms of if there are other communities looking at this that wanted to migrate, that ultimately would be the recommendation for, you know, where you should spend more time than you think. In terms of timeframes, that took us six months from, you know, C Club Cohort 2 finishing in February. We didn't launch until September in terms of, you know, public launch. And that was also just the team and, you know, getting our organizational structure in place. But really the work that went into that was really nailing that, you know, good growth mission um, and is now something that is uh, it's core, cool, literally, to all decisions, uh, and hopefully will, you know, be in the future as well. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about good growth um, specifically. And I'm curious, because you were talking about values and, and values being central, central, and when you have those values, then everything sort of trickles out from there and, and makes other decisions easier. And this is something that I think a lot of Web3 communities are now starting to see a need for, because again, we're getting to the point where sometimes now there's hard decisions to make or decisions where maybe there's disagreement within the community. And so um, I want to learn more about good growth, but maybe even before that, how did you as a community 
decide on a set of values, who was involved, and how is that or how might those values evolve as your community grows and matures? Yeah, it was um, well, collective, collaborative, in a mirror board. <laughs> um, and yeah, even that as a, you know, a way of working, um, decentralized, async, uh, you know, geographically, like, entirely different locations, um, was yeah, incredible in short, uh, because it completely uh, you know, rethinks how previously or in a Web2 perspective, um, A, how you work. And I mean, to be fair, our agency business does a lot of this and we've got, you know, our team is not fully decentralized, but it's definitely geographically, um, you know, very spread out. And, you know, we, we, we've used these tools regularly. So, you know, that's not new. It's more about the ownership, as I said, and really empowering. And then was our core, uh, um, you know, our core members. And I think just to following up from your point earlier about the current community, we're about 170 now in the discord. So we went from that five and a half thousand to, you know, 170, but that preseason, as we called it in September, there was only 50. Uh, and that was the, the goal was the 50 selected and realistically 30 active out of that 50, uh, was the brief to really help collaboratively shape and define these values. Um, we also brought in our good friends at Cogdis, uh, which is an ethics and sustainability studio, um, who we've got a great relationship with. And they did the sort of the setup, so to speak, and a couple of great workshops with the core team just to really effectively frame the question, which we then took to the community to workshop together and develop. And, and we came out with 12, 12, 12 words, <clears throat> 12 values, um, around three um i guess groupings structure approach and outcome and as i said these as any values for any brand or any business are you know their purpose is to help you you know as i said make decisions um <clears throat> you know going forward i mean one of them's already evolved <laughs> um we've changed adaptive to regenerative um as of, i mean that was a few weeks ago so uh, yeah and i think that's regardless of web three, uh, you know, that's a brand and you need to be continually questioning, uh, you know, relevance, um, and you know, your, your core purpose. And if, uh, and, and that's not you changing, that's the world around you changing and, and, and you need to be responsive and reactive to it. So yeah, that was a, a key part of, I guess, our foundational, um, preseason and, as I said, really sets us, set it, set us up for our season one of actually putting that into practice. We had over 650 applicants, I think, um, for that first season, which was, <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate, <laughs> Nicole. Um, it's like, oh, great. What do we do with them? Like, how do we process them? And then that opens up a whole nother world of Dow tooling and you know, things that you didn't know you need to think about, which luckily are now improving, I mean, month on month. And we built a moderator bot that, um, you know, connects to Discord. So you can basically emoji tag within the channels. Um, and, you know, some of these internal simple things that, you know, save a few minutes here and there, but, you know, collectively, you know, save hours. Um, and again, it's this new mindset of, well, ways of working, which I think for anybody new coming in is the biggest adjustment, uh, working async, working on new tools, but ultimately, and this isn't refined and it's <laughs> like, I would question and challenge any community in terms of how, uh, I mean, the effectiveness really of, of, of this ways of working, because there's a huge amount of po positives, but you know, there's a fair amount of negatives as well. And, and again, I think, as I said, that's more of a mindset of how people approach or, you know, really understand about getting into this, uh, you know, async DAO life, uh, which is definitely what it's, uh, you know, shaping up to be. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that your Discord um, 
definitely has a human feel to it. And I think that I wanted to talk about some of the different tools that you've brought specifically into that because there's a couple in there that just feel really delightful and fun and welcoming. Um, there's one that I believe is still available to any other Discord, a bot that you all built, the WTF bot, mm -hmm. I think it's called. Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what was the impetus behind building those and putting those out? And can you talk a little bit about that, about the GM React, um, and if there's any others that I might not be aware of? Yeah, sure. And our earliest realization of bringing a Web2 community into Web3 is education. And how can we help our current community really understand what the fuck <laughs> this world of Web3 is? And um, so, you know, that's where we started. And we had a load of education and like how to's and like a learn section, but, you know, very much written accessibly. And, and, and you know, we've always done that from early news feeds, any content we put out, even our consumer research reports, uh, it's always natural language, accessible language, really you know, translating um, whatever it is, a mac macro trend. Uh, you know, we've even got, <laughs> if you haven't seen them, uh, you know, a series of our reports are called Dirty Words, which uh, <laughs> is one down from banned words. We have a banned word list within our business that are words you cannot use, but then we have dirty words, which are words that have lost you know, lust or meaning, like what do they mean anymore? And our first one was exclusivity. Uh, we've done one on influence. We're currently working one on community. So, you know, all of these, we kind of know what they mean, but like, actually, what do they mean? And actually, what do they mean in the context of, you know, today's, today's world? So, yeah, that's where we've come from. And the WTF bot was, you know, a simple, as far as we're concerned, needed way to help our Web2 community understand what <laughs> Wagami, like every single different acronym out there. Um, because if you don't understand the language, then how are you going to learn? And yeah, this is a fundamental, um, this is even beyond your onboarding. This is just about literally what is going on and what are they even talking about? And that's it. So it's a simple Discord plugin. We're on 60 plus servers at the moment. And you put a question mark on whatever the word is, and it's not all acronyms. And it just comes about with a description, credit the source, off we go. Uh, we've just done a, a collaboration with the crypto lexicon guys that have basically built a really nice, very cool, because um, Greg's involved, um, yeah, NFT GAN generator um, thing, front end. Um, but ultimately, we're sort of a bit more of the plumbing and the database at the back end. But, you know, they all go to serve the same purpose. And I think that also touches on something else we're working on, which is, you know, is a doubt at our bridge and really recognizing the need of you know, openness uh, within communities that share the same values. You know, coming back to obviously our relationship with C Club, which is which is deep um, and meaningful. Uh, and it's like, well, how let's not think about them in silos. You know, let's think about ways that collectively we can reach this, these common goals. And um, and there's a lot of incredible builders out there who are, you know, answering these questions, like the guys at Guild, um, with Agora. I mean, next level stuff. Um, but then also just some practical fun stuff, like our GM bot, which... <laughs> We haven't actually released. We were talking about it the other week, actually. It's just a very simple, every time you hit GM and channel, it automatically adds a little sunshine underneath. So, you you know, you don't feel lonely. <laughs> um, I don't know if you other servers have already got it. Um, but, you know, it was just a couple of other little extras that we put in. And now I think there's a proper GM thing and there's rankings and, you know, streaks. And it's like properly gamified. Um, we didn't quite go that far. This was a bit more light touch, but you know, recognize Buenos Dias and, you know, a few different language variations from the GM, but also for our custom emojis that we'd built. So I think all these, they're all small, but for anybody entering, it's one of, I think to your point, is one of a personalization, but, you know, you f it feels different. Um, it, it looks different within the context of, it can look different within Discord, which is incredibly limiting and 
<laughs> frustrating at times. Um, but it is ultimately about, it's practical. And if that can really help people understand what this means, that they therefore feel a bit more confident to contribute or put their hand up to get involved, then, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to where we want to get to. Yeah, I really enjoy them. And I didn't realize about the crypto lexicon partnership, but that makes a ton of sense because I think that they're both coming out of that same spirit of demystifying these terms that, you know, when you come in and you've seen wag me and wag bad and, um, yeah, all of these pieces and you either feel very in the know or you feel completely yeah. lost. And I think to your point, we're trying to make people feel in the know and, and feel included. Yeah, and I was just on the inclusion. I was chatting with Rick from Super High yesterday, and Super High, uh, an amazing online um, education resource, and you know they've got courses on all great things, and just launched an incredible basic income um, project. But you know the the interesting conversation, well, I found it interesting, <laughs> was around you know GMs and. It's, you know, it's, it's signaling and in whichever way, positive and negative and really, and I think we, I'm talking collectively, we of I like op operators um, uh, within Web3, I think we also need to remember that sometimes that it is a bubble and we are all talking to each other, um, you know, <laughs> call it what it is. And there's a whole nother world out there that isn't and looking in and it can, you know, understandably feel alienating, exclusive. And do I actually want to be part of that club? If it's, you know, that's, that's the, you know, the expected, you know, behavior. Um, and I think there's, there's a huge point there in terms of well, what, what we call tough questions um, and really addressing some of the, I mean, call it what it is, hypocrisies um, and biases and, you know, lack of diversity and, you know, some fundamentals that are completely, you know, devoid in this, in, in the current setup. And we're not <laughs> claiming at all we've got any answers to them. We're, we are proactively asking the questions to start the conversation to hopefully, you know, shift some of the approaches. And, um, and again, coming all the way back to language, that's ultimately where it starts uh, in terms of proactively you know, shifting diversity um, or really in terms of your question about um, you know, membership and even application process, you know, we are, you know, we're proactively you know, connecting with other communities to you know, really recognize the imbalances even within, within protein about how we can improve um, you know, how we're set up, what the, ethnicity mix what the gender mix is you know what um you know the cultural mix is and and i think that's everybody's collective responsibility to a recognize it but b actually proactively try and do something about it so yeah to us uh, one of the key ingredients of our good growth um is 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 definitely you know those those approaches and those um well as i said those tools to facilitate it um, but then those actions that follow to actually turn it into something. Yeah, so let's get into that a little bit more um, because I'm curious. I know that you had a very sort of intentional application process. Obviously, you went from 650 to 50, which um, tons of respect and admiration and empathy for how that process can go. Um, but I'm, I'm curious because I think that I really appreciate you bringing that up, um, Will, because I think that there's a lot of intentionality and, and hope around diversity and inclusion. And I, you know, I, I do see some movement happening. And at the same time, um, because of the nature of tech and other creative spaces that have obviously fundamentally been dominated by white men, um, we are seeing some patterns continue to play out. And I think it's this both and where a lot of people are doing a lot of specific and intentional work around changing that. And also it takes time. And also sometimes that time feels very frustrating and, um, you know, prolonged. And so I'm curious 
you know, if you don't mind sharing, what has that process been like at Protein? Were there any, and then specifically, were there any um, pieces where you saw this or that decision-making tool made a big difference and had a big impact? Yeah, it's, I mean, answering that in reverse order, there wasn't any sort of tool um, that made the impact. I mean, other than our little mod traffic light bot, as we call it, for the application process, because, you know, the fundamentals are way bigger than that in terms of code of conduct, um, your your DEI, diversity, uh, you know, um, equity and your know, inclusion um, you know, approach. And, and to be fair, we've also lent on a lot of work we've done sort of with at the protein mothership level um, off the back of 2020 and BLM and, you know, we as a business overall um, asked a lot of tough questions of, our, of ourselves as a business, um, being a, you know, a white, straight male. Um, and, uh, you know, in, you know, I guess sort of overall, but equally, you know, there's positives and negatives in any business. And and a hundred percent agree in terms of intentionality. And we just took our time uh, as we did when we were looking at migrating across to, uh, you know, current community to new community. It's, there is definitely a pressure of, you know, move fast and break things. Uh, but really for things like this, you shouldn't, uh, because they're way too important. And equally, just because someone else is doing something doesn't mean to say, you know, you should also, uh, because everything is different in terms of who you are, where you're going, who's your community. Um, but in terms of practical, uh, it's not even advice. It's just more about sharing what we did. It was a recognizing it, um, B, uh, and this is both in terms of what we did in 2020, but then, um, what we're continually doing now is just being brutally honest, um, radically transparent, you know, tough, all those tough questions. Um, but you know, I guess the beauty of the current, you know, DAO open philosophy, like it is a philosophy, right? The way of working is that that's intrinsically built into, you know, how you show up. So, you know, we have a specific DEI team, you know, within protein, um, we're currently updating our code of conduct and our, and our processes as we grow from, you know, a tiny community to a small community. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's all about dialogue, right? That's where all of this starts is continual communication and really, and again, from an individual's point of view, this is an entirely different dynamic of, and this is not about ownership and me being the CEO of Protein. This is just about facilitating the community. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one vote, <laughs> one vote of 170. So it's an entirely different dynamic about A, how decisions are made, but B, you know, helping to steer and shape the direction of, of where we're going overall. So it's, it takes time. And, um, yeah, luckily, as I said, the, um, uh, you know, the attitude of anybody who's proactive within Web3 is, and this is regardless of where you're from, or, you know, who you are, you know, I, I, is in terms of if you're going to show up, you know, show up. And that's a really good place to start. Yeah, you know, the challenge now is, is making sure the right people show up. And how can we, as I said, proactively, you know, start to rebalance this and, I mean, it's definitely going to take time, but there's some phenomenal sort of uh, communities, you know, ones in C Club 04, um, you know, Boys Club. I mean, just <laughs> numerous levels I love. Um, Web3 Baddies, Surge, you know, you know there's, some, there's some great communities out there that if you haven't found, you know, it is proactively inviting you to go and, 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 and look them out and join. And this is regardless of gender or or any kind of, um, you know, your pronoun, it's, you know, it's, it's something that we all need to be, you know, cognitive of and, and do our best to, to rebalance. Yeah, it's definitely a work in progress. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful about what we can bring to web three and institutionalizing some of these changes. Um, you mentioned a little bit about 
governance and you know you are one person with one vote and so i'm curious to switch gears a little bit and talk about governance and tokens and those are two really big topics so let's so, start really basic first can you tell me about the protein token um how did you make some of the fundamental early decisions around supply and initial distributions sure so we are uh, ERC20, um, 100 million minted last February. Um, we, <laughs> as I think we all did in, you know, see this time last year, didn't really have any idea what we were doing. Um, I have now a little bit more of an idea. And um, yeah, and just to answer your questions about the, the the early allocations uh just really looked at you know existing communities from fwbs to forefronts that were in you know similar sort of place um just in terms of how they're doing it uh but then really using that to sort of see works for us and obviously c club uh was a part of that initial allocation uh three percent um and then the core team, um, which I'm part of, um, was another allocation in terms of the core team. And um, then a number of different advisors. And they were, uh, without being too dramatic, you know, beyond influential uh, as a sort of post seed club uh, journey and really, uh, you know, selective intentionally selective to my point earlier in terms of diversity but b in terms of capability and um we agreed with them a, a an allocation for their you know contribution in tokens um gave them the option of and it's hard because when something's not worth anything it's <laughs> incredibly subjective conversation but the future potential um this is not investment advice um, but, you know, also respecting them as experts and giving them the option if they wanted it in fiat or stable, you know, as well as um, as well as tokens and, you know, a couple of them chose that. So and I think that's also another thing to consider that not everybody is going to want to work, um, contribute um, for your tokens from day one, unless, you know, unless you've got something obviously incredible. Um, and so really the rest is was kept in treasury, which was around 70%. So, you know, without going to the full detail, it's actually all on our snapshot. If you want to get into the details of the current allocation of for when we raised our, our pre-seed just before Christmas. Um, and even with that, that was intentionally selective for yeah, individuals. Um, we didn't want to speak to funds. We were only raising 250K. So it wasn't like a, a huge amount. I mean, it's still... A relatively um it's all relative in terms of uh, valuations and, and and raise but again it was about the who uh, and who are these people coming in um you know what were they bringing and contributing and where were they adding value so i think all of these things were just are our things to consider if you are looking at that obviously based on where you're going what you're doing when you need it who you need it from but ultimately the the general i guess sort of starting you know pizza pie yeah is is sort of keeping at least 70 percent for you know for treasury and ultimately for future use uh and then you know splitting the rest between core team advisors and you know early investors um that's incredible top line version uh but yeah that tells me where we ended up but interestingly and uh, maybe i shouldn't say it <laughs> well we haven't finalize this conversation yet uh but we are currently looking well this bit we are definitely doing is looking at porting across the polygon uh a pretty big chunk purely for the practicalities of you know avoiding gas fees and my point about accessibility um and uh, you know we've got incentivizations we've got a whole model around called earn to access for our newsletter so if you submit a great link it makes the newsletter, you own 500 proteins. Um, it's currently 5,000 5, proteins to get in. So if you submit 10 good links, you, know, you can get to protein. So again, about rethinking models around access that is around you know, contribution rather than necessarily buying your way in because who knows what that price is going to be. Um, but the pure mechanics, even with the WTF pot, we're adding 
yeah, 500 protein sort of incentive to submitting your term. Um, you know, there's no point doing that if we're sending them ERC20 tokens because the gas price is, let's not talk about the gas price. So I w- if anybody's starting today, I would 100%, you know, clearly, or, or you know, consider, you know, running it on alternative networks. Um, obviously, if you are aware and what you, you you really know what you want to do, then there's obviously prestige and um, this is a whole nother podcast. <laughs> uh, but it's important because uh, the point being, and it was a good friend, um, one of our advisors, he's just launched a DeFi service in Africa, all on Polygon. And for anybody who doesn't have the legacy or the history or the status of why ERC20, why Ethereum, they just want to do transactions, right? It's it's like you want to go and buy your coffee, you just it's gonna work, right? How that transaction transacted and which network it went to connect your bank to the point of sale thing in the coffee shop. I mean, really, who cares? Um, if you want to look at it from a purely consumer perspective, which ultimately is where we're you know, we're going. Obviously we're still early, but from a consumer perspective, they don't care. They just want it to work. So I think that's something to really consider in terms of which chain and, you know, because ultimately the utilities there and there'll be a whole bunch of comments, I'm sure, about (laughs) whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. But um, I'll ask the question. And that's one of our big tough questions that we have in our Discord right now is, is, you know, L1v, L2 L2 or, you know, Polygon versus... Solana versus Clio versus all the others, but let's not soak up more time talking about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny because I think that you were talking about your token distribution and, you know, looking back a year later, it all does feel very basic, right? You you talk about, well, it's this basic pizza pie and, you know, we did this much for this group, this much for this group, this is in the treasury, this is how we're thinking about it, this is how the tokens go out for this action or that action, And yet at the time, a year ago, that thinking was not as advanced and evolved and there weren't as many people who had gone through that yet. And so it did feel very early and scary. And, you know, a year later, I think that there's some really nice templates thanks to people like you. And, you know, I think that here we are in this new conversation where L1s and L2s feel very confusing and the stakes feel very high that you might make the wrong decision and there's people again pioneering it but there's not a tremendous amount of great templates and so i think it also just speaks to how important the building and learning is and um that there's these cycles and that we're embracing those cycles so i congratulate you and and thank you for all of the learnings that we're gonna be able to (laughs) take from you in the future well it's all part of Um, building in the open right and sharing as we go um and I mean, one of the things, I mean, just to build on that, we're, you know, a key part of our good growth is is to build a fund, uh, you know, to really get be in a position to, I mean, literally put our money where our mouth is um, to support these projects. And, you know, we're loosely you know, framing it under this sort of Gitcoin for culture and, you know, recognizing, well, it's this thesis of sort of culture as a public good and, uh, and nobody really owns it, uh, but you know there's a lot of incredible creators and organisations and communities, you know, contributing to it. Um, and for those who don't know about Gitcoin, I would 100% look into it. But yeah, effectively, it's a, uh, our analogy is a sort of a, a cultural incubator. Uh, they have incredible grants programs. It's an investment piece, but you know, a, a huge sort of education, um, you know. Uh, sort of division and, and section within their their um their, their setup and and you know that resonates deeply and uh and and again in terms of that role and that ambition and coming back to our doubt at our bridge and ways collectively and collaboratively we can move forward and share as we learn and that i i mean i just sort of even pausing to think about the analogy of web two businesses sharing monthly budgets <laughs> or you know how they work their like legal frameworks it's just like you wouldn't these are like ip protect like contractually protected ip um and it's 
you know, it's out there. And actually, two of our team, um, Fancy and Chu, wrote this great piece called Permissionless Brands, which I also highly recommend you look up. That yeah, really challenges these new models of permission and ownership within you know. Um, it's more applicable to new brands, but equally could be applied to existing brands. Um, and challenging that line of what, I mean, really, what do we own um, without getting too messy about it? Uh, that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is all about the, the greater good and, and building in the open and, and sharing and, and, you know, back to this idea about sort of culture as a public good. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time negotiating with many lawyers over many years, thinking about all of the things that couldn't be shared and that had to be kept secret for whatever reason. And it's just such a different world that we're in now where we're actually all benefiting from sharing a lot of these learnings because when you put your information together with somebody else's information, all of a sudden, then you have this whole other set of answers that are unlocked. And it's a great space to be in. It'll be interesting how it matures and evolves as this space becomes, you know, beyond sort of the experimentation phase. But right now it feels pretty fun. Um, well, I have maybe one or two final questions. Um, staying on that topic of tokens and governance, um, I'm interested to learn what it's like on sort of the day-to-day -day or the the ground level. You spoke a little bit about um, different ways that community members can earn tokens, whether it's through contributing a link or contributing a term to the WTF bot. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, obviously you've been really specific with the values and principles that you're building within Protein. How has that permeated into how you think about tokens within the community? Um, both as a, you know, way of rewarding work, um, but also what are the other things that you use the token for, whether it's access and or um, governance and decision making? Sure. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's the ultimate question, really, in terms of your tokenomics and your, t your utility. But it's from our perspective, yes, the two prime utilities are access. So as mentioned, you need 5,000 proteins to get into the Discord. Um, and as I also mentioned, we're really challenging the ways of, uh, you know, rethinking exclusivity um, in terms of enabling and this earn to access. And, and there's a number of different ones we're sort of testing. Uh, we've also built, a, we just launched actually this week, this uh, protein guest pass. So it's like a 30 day NFT membership for those who, you know, not necessarily want to be full-time members. They might be potential investors or partners or collaborators just want to drop in without any of the faff, <laughs> which it is, of airdrops and, you know, token gating. Um, so, yeah, primary utility access, secondary is governance, um, which we use Snapshot, and it works. And um, we're still early, and we're very sort of cognitive of that, that we don't, you know, really start pushing sort of decision fatigue uh, of just too many proposals and because you know, generally the response rate and or the engagement rate on, on proposals for governance are historically very low. Um, so yeah, those are the two main ones. Um, we're still pre-liquidity, so there's no way actually to buy our token. Um, it's something that is next for us on the roadmap. Um, and so therefore it's still coming back to onboarding and um, your point about sort of the membership and, and the team structures and ways for members to, to, to earn, uh, you know, it's, it's very manual, um, which is good in some way because we can be really, uh, it's not even about the curation of it, but this is sort of very much, you know, personalized in terms of the individual emails that sent out and when you arrive and there's a team that look after you and, uh, you know, these important arrival, uh, you know, experiences, uh, if you want to call them that. Um, but then I think in terms of the overall, uh, you know, bigger plans in terms of that extended ut utility, I'm, I mean, <laughs> how long you got? <laughs> it's like token tokens for days. Um, 
already thinking about how we integrate it within you know the all the previous communities I, I mentioned that still exist and still function, whether that's tokenized access into our workspace, um, you know, perks as we call them. So, you know, as a member, you get discounts. You know, these are all super easy and actually relatively straightforward to implement. You know, even within our brand world, within agencies about brand collaborations, and we've done a lot of thinking about, which is, yeah, it's quite an alpha, but... <laughs> like an extension of this NFT guest pass about how we can bring brands into the mix, um, you know, and they can still contribute. But, and this is about, you know, more about patronage, um, which and we've got very good, deep brand relationships, but we're very keen and cautious about letting any brands in, uh, A, without, you know, constructive consultation and, and, um, and collective decision, but equally just really recognizing and again, again it's it's the same filter right alignment of good growth and if if brand aligns with good growth values and not all brands are bad right <laughs> there are some good brands out there so <clears throat> you know that becomes a completely different conversation of effectively brands pitching to us to work collaboratively uh, and therefore for our members to you know to earn uh, whether that's tokens, whether that's stable, whether that's fear, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, as I said, there's there's multiple different uh, mechanics or opportunities for current members, whether that's team leads, whether that's coordinate, which we're um, also running, which is a effectively a way of recognizing contributions or sort of peer reviewed. Um, we're looking at source cred. Yeah, I guess not quite reluctantly, but. I guess with due skepticism um, because there's an opportunity for it to be gamified because it's just purely measuring effectively discord logs. (laughs) How active are you? The more active you are, the more tokens you get. And that's not necessarily a metric to us. That is what's important because one incredible comment or one incredible contribution, you know, would far outweigh 50 GMs. Um, Not the GMs are bad, but yeah. It's, uh, yeah, as I said, I think it's, it's really looking at what works for you and there's some phenomenal tools out there. And I mean, you guys at C club do a great job in terms of sharing that as well, in terms of where to look and who to, uh, yeah, who to follow. Yeah. I think that it's very much also about putting them together, about sort of tooling Legos, using this for this specific thing and and this other tool for this specific thing. And I think that that's the privilege that we have right now. Um, It's both the the privilege and the challenge because obviously when you're piecing tools together, you have to make sure that they all connect and that nothing gets lost in the shuffle. But it certainly is a privilege to have so many great solutions in front of us. Um, well, we're just about at time. I want to make sure that you have a little bit of time to tell us where we can find you. And also if there's any exciting pieces coming up over the next few months that we should be on the lookout for. Sure. Uh, you can find us at Protein um, on all your favorite social channels. Um, one advantage about being early is you get to snag the good handles. Um uh, Mirror as well has got very much our, uh, I guess, sort of official updates of the community. Um, Protein XYZ for the, you know, I guess, sort of the landing page. And um, I guess one thing to look out for with, hopefully by the time this goes out, we will have published our 100 Days of DAO, which is <laughs> nothing more than what it says. It's just us. Basically, it's a big dump of like insight and information and learnings um, of our first hundred days of running protein. And um, it will cover some of the things I mentioned on this will will be in there with more details with links uh, that you can follow up on. So I definitely watch out for that. And if this and our good growth uh, approach sort of resonates, then highly encourage you to, to apply and um, you know, get involved. And as I said, our next big sort of step is, yeah, is to is to set up our, our first fund that we can actually start push, pushing, um, supporting projects and, and pushing them through the framework. And that's where we are right now. Um, within our uh, current community, we're running sort of a number of pilot projects. 
to really sort of stress test the framework and make sure that what we think and what we hope it can do, it will be able to do. Um, and so we're hoping by the end of season two, which would be towards the end of March, April, that we'll have you know, effectively a, an MVP, right? Uh, something that is, is stress tested and, and works uh, that we can then open up and start inviting out um, other projects. And, and this to me is why it's great to see some of the projects coming through, you know, C Club, and there's, there's definite overlaps. Um, I did mention the Jess that <laughs> I think he liked it, um, that we were sort of more like a seed club finishing school, um, which is a compliment, by the way, um, <laughs> in the fact that, you know, you guys do such a great job with the accelerator program, you know, but, and I know that you guys have also got your investment venture side, but, you know, there are also other needs sometimes or resources or, you know, things that can be layered in that, um, you know, that might suit. So, and that to me is why the, these relationships are so important and, you know, collectively, collaboratively, we can, you know, we can all get to where we're going. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing everything. And um, yeah, I have to say, you know, looking a year back, it's been about a year since we I met. Know, it's and crazy, since right? We started on this journey. So congratulations on the progress and, you know, on, on your raise and on all of the exciting projects you have ahead for this year. And thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate it. No problem, Nicole. Anytime.